Hey guys, I uh, just thought I'd do another inbox review. Um, this kit I've had in my stash for the best part of two or three years. It is a very hard kit to get hold of now uh, as it's out of production. Um, I was fortunate enough to get one actually. Uh, <clears throat> I think it went out of production about two or three years ago. Um, I've had it, as I say, I've had it sitting in my stash around about that length of time. Um, it is a very hard kit to get hold of now, this particular boxing, um, being the E1. Um, Edouard have brought out a host of 109s, actually, right from the E up to the K version. Um, and this, as I say, is a very rare one indeed. Um, it's of the early version of Emil, uh, which I think first saw service in the Spanish Civil War uh, and then went on to be used during the early part of the Second World War with the invasion of Poland, right through to the Blitzkrieg and then obviously the early part of the Battle of Britain um, and possibly the early part of the Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of Russia. Um, um, this one actually depicts a lot of the earlier versions during the early war years. Um, you've got a host of all of them actually. You've got the splinter camo version uh, around about circa 1939. You've got this one which is during the Battle of France, Red 13. And I think you've got one or two versions set during the Battle of Britain. Um, as you can see from the box art, it's depicting a typical scene of a 109 hot on the tail of a Bristol Blenheim during the Battle of France. Um, I think Paul Breton was going to do a build series on this particular kit and then decided against it um, as he went for a, another one of uh, Edouard's E versions. Um, and uh, like I say, I've had this one in my stash a long time. Um, I haven't got around to building it. It's probably going to be a little bit long before I do as I say I saw it in this dash and thought well let's do an inbox review on this kit anyway in case there's anybody out there who's after one on eBay uh, but as I say the prices are already going to be astronomical now if you can get hold of this one um, the kit number as you can see here is 8261 and you can freeze frame that if you wish to get hold of the kit number okay uh, as you can see, it's distributed by Edward. It's a profit back version, which means you've got little bits of etched brass, you've got some resin, as well as some masks for the actual cockpit. So uh, you do get some goodies in with this just to enhance the detail, as opposed to the weekend version. Um, on the side here, you've got the various color co color callouts. Uh, there's about four. First one is red thirteen. Um, Flown by Kurt Uben of the 6th Jag Trager Gruppe, uh, 186 Wang, was it Wangerug, Germany, March 1940. Um, the second one is a yellow nosed uh, bird, uh, which is a yellow 11 of Flight Wutz, oh, well, I don't know, Arthur Bies, 9th Jag Geschwader, 26 Kaffir, France, August 1940, during the Battle of Britain. Um, third option is yellow 2, 6th Jagdgeschwader, 52 Hussmann, Germany, 1940. And this particular one, which I'm quite interested in doing, is red 1 of Hauptmann, Hans Trut, is it Trudolf? Yeah, Trudolf. 2nd uh, Jagdgeschwader, 77, Juliusburg, Germany, September 1939. Um, that's the version I think I'm going to do it in if I get around to building this. And then you've got the colour callouts that you can see on the side of the box there, along with a kit number. And then on the back, just basically telling you what the spires and the span of it is. Another box art, top box art, and then you've got the um, address for Edward itself. Okay, and then the most interesting thing we're going to do now is have a look at the kit itself. Urgh, I can get the box open. There we are. First off, the instruction sheet with a overall history of the actual aircraft, as you can see there, which is quite concise. Nice little 
pamphlet, which you normally get with Edward. And then we'll open the pamphlet up. We've got the sprue trees, which you can see here, and then where you've got the uh, blue parts, they're parts that aren't going to be used in the kit. Colour call outs at the bottom there. Um, unfortunately, well, they give you Mr. Hobby, Aqueous, or Mr. Colour. Uh, colour call outs on those, uh, which I have to say I do quite like the aqueous range. And then obviously showing your cockpit brass and your rich brass parts as well. First stage is the interior of the side walls of the 109. I've got various etched parts. It gives you the colour call outs on what to paint them with. You've got the gear levers there, etc. And then obviously on the other side, little bits of the actual internal frame which go on. And then the next process is the actual cockpit itself with the control stick. I'm not quite sure if that's a qu uh, throttle quadrant or whatever that you go on. Floor plates, back headrest. And then obviously you've got the radiator air filter there as well, which goes on along with some etched brass. Cockpit uh, col control column again, you've got etched brass parts which are pre-painted, which go on. Back headrest, uh, which is I think the bulletproof headrest, and then obviously you've got the throttle leave pedals there. Um, you've got the supplied etch bra seat belts, which go onto the seat, and then the control golem goes down along with the uh, pedals, and then I don't know what this is a gear lever or something or other, which again you've got parts of PE and it gives you a color guide, okay. And then we're getting on to the next part, some of the internal detail of the, it looks like the, um, not quite sure what they are. Uh, again, all RLM grey, I don't know if it's parts of the engine or the back firewall, which goes on. Uh, yeah, it is, I think. Or oh, where the machine gun column goes, so you can have, obviously have this open as if it's being worked on. Then you've got the assembly of the Daimler Benz engine, which you can see is quite highly in depth. Again, your PE parts, etc., which go on, and then it's fitted to the back firewall. And then you've got the assembly of the tail wheel. The fuselage shafts go in together, and all the internal details, including the engine, are all buttoned up. And then basically put the tail planes on along the back, along with a rudder, and then obviously you've got the strut supports as well to go on with some little PE there. Okay, next process is basically, again, you've got the air uh, inlets uh, which go underneath the ring along with some etched brass detail. And then the assembly of the two wing halves which go on along with the actual undercarriage bays as well. And then you've got the elevators which go on as well. The uh, assembly of the machine gun itself, as you can see there, they both go into the actual machine gun bay. And then fuselage goes onto the wings. And then there's some little detail here with the air filter as well. Okay. Then you get onto the assembly of the undercarriage, which you can see here, along with the tyre and the rims. Okay. And then that goes along there, along with another bit of etched brass. And again, as you're going through, it gives you a colour guide, which is fantastic. Then you've got the airspeed indicator and some of the actual elevator um, levers which go on. And that goes into the middle of the two air filters, which you can see there, or air grills. Air grills go on, covers go on, along with the two um, parts of the undercarriage. And then you've got the airspeed indicator which goes on, etc. And the part which goes into the air, fil air radiator. And what else have we got here? I think this is just detail which actually goes onto the engine cover. Um, and then you've got the actual, um, I don't know what they call that, um, radio out there, I'm not sure, which goes onto the tail. And air grill goes into the engine, and then obviously you put the cover onto the machine gun bay, and then the engine covers etc. Again, you have the option of having it open. Because it seems a shame that you've done all that work and it's going to be hidden out away. So there you go. Then you've got uh, details of the actual um, control uh, column, which you can see there. And um, gun sight, which go on into the cockpit. 
And then you're going on to the actual um, canopy, which you can see here, the front part of the canopy. Again, you've got the canopy mast there. Um, you've got the back headrest there, which goes in onto the main part of the actual um, canopy. And then obviously you assemble the canopy together. You do have the option of having them open or closed. Nose, uh, then you've got the assembly of the actual propeller and nose hub. That goes on to the actual kit. And then obviously if you want the cockpit open, you've got the control bar there for it to sit as is there. Okay. As I say, your first colour call out is of red 13, which I've already gone through, which was an actual aircraft based in Germany. I think it was used out in the Battle of France. Standard camo scheme of light blue with the two splinter colour schemes of the camouflage up on top, which is RLM 71 and RLM 70. Okay, and then this one, which is probably the version that which I will actually build, I'm going to get around to building this kit, which is the version which was used out in Juliusburg, Germany in September 1939, red one. Okay, I think there is an actual colour film of this of a, a Jakob Schwader. Uh, somewhere along the line that I've seen on TV. So there you go. Then you've got one of two yellow nose versions. I think this was one that was used in the Battle of Britain. Um, or is it? No, it's based in Germany around about circa 1940. Got a little bit more of a mottled colour scheme on this one. Oh, yellow 2. And then you've got yellow 11, which was a version used out in Calais during the Battle of Britain at the last, uh, in August 1940. And one of a yellow nosed bird again, Café France, August 1940, as well. So that's your color call outs, and then obviously, you've got all your etch stencils, which are placements as well on this kit. So there you go. Right, that's going through the instruction sheet, which is very comprehensive, and then we get on to the actual crux of the kit itself, the kit part again. With the bags on these, they're quite easy to open. Self sealing, which I love about Edward kits. Again, it's not a very big machine for 148, um, as I don't think the 109 was a big aircraft, to be honest with you. You've got the underwing over there. Oh, excuse me. That's my dinner repeating on me. Um, again, you can see there's a lovely range of detail of all the rivets and the panel lines very crisp very tidy and again with the upper part of the wing as well you've got the forward elevator there which was a well-known feature of the 109 again the rivet detail is superb it really is absolutely exquisite and then we're moving on to the fuselage halves which you can see here again the detail inside is very concise and that will be basically sort of boosted with the etched brass parts that you'll get with this kit um, there's the in there's the nose cover the engine cover you've got a bottom bomb rack here okay and then you've got the machine gun cover there another uh, rack there for whichever you want to put underneath and then you've got the I don't know what these are not quite sure but anyway the devil of detail on the fuselage half again with the riveting is absolutely exquisite it really is so there you go that's that all right put them back in the bag okay So this is a very highly sought after kit now. I mean, I got it a fairly good deal. I think I got it for about mm, 35. Pretty ranged a lot more than that now. And then the second set of sprues, which you only get two bags of. There's uh, some of the finer details, such as the engine, elevators, etc. Let me get the damn thing open. there a minute and you've got your fuel tank there which you can see again the level of detail on it is exquisite now come up very nicely with the wash and a bit of weathering as you can see there and then you've got the cockpit tub here nice and crisp and clear 
and you've got two versions of the bulletproof headrest which you can see there as well uh, this is part of the front spinner I'm not quite sure what that part is there's your control there's your cockpit column there I mean you can use that or basically use the etch brass pre-painted set which is probably what I'll use various leaves and lumps and bumps again you've got two versions of those one with a machine gun through the middle out of focus which you can see there and one without then you've got the pedal levers there that I'm not quite sure what that is hmm oh that might be a part of the air filter into the engine and then you've got the side part there I'm not sure what that is Again, the propeller there. Again, no ounce of flash on it. Nice crisp detail. Various levers and lumps and bumps which go on the side walls, which you can see here. Parts of the DB601A engine. Absolutely exquisite. Very nicely done. Even the front part, the engine housing. Look at the rivet detail on it. Absolutely exquisite. It really is. And that's basically that. And then obviously you've got payloads, etc. Again, the detail with the stretch fabric effect on the actual elevators is absolutely superb. It really is. Then you've got the undercarriage bays, which you can see there. I think these are the two halves of a possible bomb. That's your air inlets and the wings. And again, with even with the tail rudder, look at that, absolutely exquisite, really nicely done. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> that was not meant to happen. <laughs> oh dear, I'm probably never going to live that down now, anyway. Uh, then again, you've got the back firewall there, tyres. And then you've got your wheel hubs here, etc. Beautifully done. And your machine guns there, which go in machine cannons there. Faithfully reproduced, as you can see. So that's that. Right. I'm trying to get them back in the bag now. This isn't going to be easier said than done. Yeah, easier said than done. Right, um, try to slide it back in. Right, that's your plastic in the kit virtually. There's not a lot to it. Oh, I think this is from the old Hasegawa kit. And then what comes with it is, oh, a little correction set for your engine, which you can see there as well. There you go, and a little colour guide. Um, then you've got the cockpit, and that is a resealable bag, which is a damn good idea. I'll get them out, have a look at them. Lovely and clear, as you can see there. Not one, oh, there is a slight scratch there. Mind you, that might be a hair, but no, clear and crisp. If I can get the damn thing to focus, as you can see, clear and crisp, absolutely excellent. So I'll pop that back in the bag very gingerly, he says. I'm trying to get that back in the bag, he says. It's not easy. Hang on, I don't want to mark these or get them scratched. So that's resealed. And then you got your etch brass set there for the radiators and pedals, etc. and levers, which you can see there, beautifully reproduced. I'm not going to take them out of the bag because I don't want them to get damaged. And your radiator grills. And again, you got your pre painted control column, which you can see there. Which is more than likely what I'll be using, and then it's your seat belts, etc. So yes, yeah, beautifully done. And then you've 
got your cockpit mask. Again here, supplied by Edward. And then we'll get on to the decals. Again, there's your various options. You've got your swastika there, which you can assemble. And I think the decals are actually made by Cartograph. I'm not sure. Yeah, they are. They're actually made by Cartograph. Or you've got full swastikas, which is most unusual. Because they're supposed to be outlawed in most of Europe. And then you've got the Vulcan crews and the various emblems. I tell you what, that one looks rather nice. I could do that for another version later on. So there you go. And then finally, you've got your stencils right here as well. So there you go. So quite a nice comprehensive kit. As I say, they're very hard to get hold of now. Um, I not sure if I've seen any of the, any on eBay to be honest with you but I'm sure it will build into superb representation of the early version of the 109E Emil version um, so that's basically it guys um, certainly a one that I treasure in my stash uh, not going to give that away in a month of Sundays I can tell you that right now but when I'm going to get around to building it, I don't know. Uh, but uh, that's going to go back into my stash for safekeeping in the future. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. So until next time, get kit crazy, happy modelling, and I'll speak to you soon.